some of the assets that I needed to do, I needed to have them be non-destructive so that I could replace the contents. So in, for example, if I had a, a logo that I wanted to place on the face of that phone, I would need to have a non-destructive workflow where I could replace that logo from that screen of that phone easily. The problem was making the logo or graphic look like it's an actual perspective and that it fits within the image. Photoshop doesn't have a non-destructive way of placing things into perspective onto a surface, like a phone, the side of a truck, or a billboard. So you've probably seen this before where you can press Control T, Command T to transform, to distort an image, and you have probably seen in tutorials or books that they tell you match the corners of the surface to get it into perspective. And the problem with doing that is that you don't have the right aspect ratio between the graphic and the surface. It may look okay, but it's actually distorted because there's a different aspect ratio. Now, Photoshop does have a tool that allows you to place things into perspective, but you cannot apply it into a smart object. That tool is this tool right here, the vanishing point, which allows you to create a grid that I've already created, but let me disable this layer, uh, that allows you to create a grid and you can paste something on there. So I can select my design, copy it, and go back into the vanishing point, and I can paste it in there, and I can move it into position, and it will be in perspective, and I can press Control T, Command T to transform and scale it in. The problem with doing it that way is that I'm working non-destructive, uh, I'm working destructive. I apply the pixels to that layer and I wouldn't be able to swap it out with a different image if I wanted to easily. What I want is a non-destructive workflow when I can, where I can simply swap the images out really, really easily. So now I'm gonna show you the technique that I came up with to solve that problem. So what you need to do is you need to select the layer that you're working with and then under the crop tool, you have the perspective crop. The perspective crop allows you to crop something and remove the perspective. So I'm gonna crop the screen of the phone, it's gonna remove the perspective, and you're gonna see the flat surface, and then I can convert that into a smart object that I can place back into perspective, but now it becomes a template, and anything that I put in there will go into that screen, have the perfect perspective, and I can easily swap out the content. So let me show you how to do that. I'm just gonna click and create my perspective crop. And actually, um, I'm gonna press the escape key to cancel um, because if I press Control H, Command H to reveal my um, guides, I've already created guides and I placed guides in the corner of each of the corners there of the screen so that they're easier to select for me. So I'm just gonna click and it'll snap into place like so. So that's the perspective. I'm gonna click on this check mark. It removes the perspective and now I have the actual aspect ratio of that screen. Then I'm gonna press Control A, Command A on the Mac to select all. Edit, copy. Now I'm going to undo that. I'm gonna undo it. And I'm gonna hide those guides by pressing Control H, Command H. And I'm gonna press Control V, Command V to paste. So now I have the actual perfect flat version of that screen in a new layer. If I right click and convert it into a smart object, I can then transform it non-destructively. So I'm gonna press Control T, Command T to transform. Then I'm going to click on distort and I'm gonna match the corners once again, like so. Here we are. And I'm going a little quickly, I'm not being very precise, but that's okay, it's, it still should work. There we go. This is a smart object. If you look at the corner of this icon here, you can see that little tiny icon. That means it's a smart object, that's a container that we can apply distortions, adjustments, filters non-destructively. If I double click on that, it's going to open it up in a new tab, and we can see the contents, which of course is that area that we cropped earlier. And I can now simply drag and drop anything I want into that smart object. And I'm gonna scale this logo into position like so, then press Control S, Command S to save, and now that, low, that design is in the actual perspective of the phone, and now this has become a template, so I can save this as a template, and anytime I want to update the contents of that phone, all I need to do is double click on that smart object and drag any image, logo, 
or whatever I want onto there. So I can just click and drag a different photo. I'm using an image from Adobe Stock in this case. I'm gonna scale that up, place her into position, Control S, Command S to save, and then she's in perspective. So now I've created a template that you can easily update. And this will work on anything, like on a, on a wall, on the side of a truck, on a billboard, anything like that. When you finish creating your template, what you should do is go into your PSD file, your Photoshop file, right click on it and rename it. Then add a T at the end of the PSD file format. Now, this has become a Photoshop template file. If I double click on that Photoshop template file, it will open up um, that template file in a new tab. Now look at the tab. The tab is now an untitled tab. So this is a separate instance of that original file. So no matter what changes I do, I will not override the original file.